Welcome back to Frog Strength Reviews. Today we're going to talk about Hellbound. That's right, the 1990s Chuck Norris film. And my God, what's on this uh, DVD collection? Oh, we also have The Hitman, which is another popular film, and Forced Vengeance, which people have problems with. Yeah. So it's Hellbound time. <laughs> Ah, Hellbound, yes. Oh, and it was brought to us by Canon. Oh, you know this is going to be a good one, because Canon has made tons of good films over the 1980s and the early 90s. <laughs> so, how does this film begin? You know what, I'm not going to really beat around the bush. Let's get this over with. So the movie basically begins over a thousand years ago in Jerusalem, in like the Middle East somewhere, like uh, close to where Jerusalem is going to be, where we see... Crusaders, Knights of the Old Crusade. Hmm. Fly. That's the Old Crusade actually going to rescue uh, on the Crusade to rescue the King's son. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a weird one. Um, oh, all right. So it's not looking for like a, a quest for like a religious facts or anything, or like a, like the birthplace of Christ or anything. No, it's uh, to rescue the King's son. Yeah, uh, Richard the Lionheart of England. Interesting. So that's the king. So they make it all the way down there, and they and they come across a temple by uh, where the demon called Parsantinos or Parsatinos or Pos Posatinos. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to say. Porzantinos, whatever. I'm, it's going to be kind of hard to try to say his fucking name. Huh. All right, either way, he's going to try to sacrifice uh, the, the king's son because he's of royal blood and gives him ultimate power. And he's supposed to be the servant of Satan. Yeah, I'm only getting sick and tired of all this crap when saying they're working for Satan and everything. I mean, I just got done watching... I mean, a couple of months ago, I literally just got done watching uh, DC's Lucifer. You know, that's the one when Lucifer actually, that's the one where the devil actually works along with a, tech, with a detective and actually falls in love with her. Yeah. And how do I know this is actually from DC continuity? Because he runs into Constantine and Stargirl uh, during, the, during the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, uh, event. Yeah, same actor. So, yeah. Hmm, not even joking. Who would have figured that out? Although, joking to the show, the, the show actually has some really good potential. A little disappointed how they actually misused Kane, though, but hey, what, what else is. But hey, what do you got to do? Anyway, Pasantanos is actually is actually going to kill the king's son, but the king and his men get there, and actually, while well, they fight off uh, a whole horde of demons, uh, like mostly just uh, Pasantanos' servants, uh, you know, like they're dressed in gowns or everything, you know, they try to fight them, uh, they fight them off, and. The king actually fights them all too, and of course they all they pin down Parsantos, but he's just too strong. He's a powerful demon, and so the king actually, and so the priest actually does something. They actually bring a priest with them, and he actually does something to Parsantos that actually weakens him. Uh, basically, he stabs him, weakens him, and actually uh, he and the knights. So he has the knights and the king put him inside of a tomb, and they actually close the tomb up and seal it with four crosses. Four golden crosses that are daggers. And the king sees the scepter. It's like, so this is the scepter that he draws his power from. Yes, my king. I see. The king takes his sword and chops the scepter down to nine pieces. At the plight of the uh, priest, he says, No, why are you doing? This is the source of his power. And he will no longer get it. Spread this uh, across the five corners. Uh, of course, all legions of the world. Make sure it ne make sure it stays separate at all times, and steal this place. We have just saved a generation. Oh, we saved generations to come. 
That is, it's on the 1950s, of course. <laughs> yeah, like uh, 1953, we got some treasure hunters uh, actually digging around, and they actually discover the cave. And one, they actually take the crosses off. And yeah, part of that, yeah, part of that actually wakes up and, uh, oh, it kills them. Yeah, well, he actually kills one of them, and the other one escapes out of fear. Cut to 1993 in Chicago. And who do we meet? Chuck Norris. That's right. We meet Chuck Norris and his partner. Chuck Norris's character is... Oh, hold up. My phone just turned off. Ah, here we go. Chuck Norris's name is Sergeant Frank Shatter. Huh. Well. Well, you know. It's a Frank that's in a movie called Hellbound, and he's a good guy. Okay. Not bad. And he's being played by Chuck Norris. And his, his partner, is play, who is played by Calvin uh, Calvin Levels, uh, his name is Detective Calvin Jackson. Really? Well, at least it wasn't Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, they actually go... Uh, they actually go off and stop a drug dealer from actually happening. They're doing the whole good cop, bad cop routine. And keep this in mind, this is Chuck Norris before, just before Walker, Texas Ranger, okay? This is around the time when Walker, Texas Ranger was actually just coming on TV at the time. All right, so Chuck was still doing movies at this point, but uh, yeah. So think of this as like a semi-Walker, Texas Ranger-ish thing, but it's like, it's still 80s style Chuck Norris. Sort of. With the actress who plays Alex Cahill in the movie, too. I'll get to that in a minute. So, they actually go up against a drug dealer. And so, they actually go up against a drug dealer. He, they get, he gives them their, their, the name of his supplier, which is a pimp. But, so, they go to the pimp, and ironically, when this is happening, a Jew, a Jewish rabbi and an antiques dealer goes into a bolt, into a shady motel where they do, conduct dealings with a... Hold on a second. A professor, Malcolm Lockley, who's also Parthenos. Yeah, so he basically has lived. Uh, so yeah, he's been living for like over thirty years, and um, yeah, now he's a professor in antiquities. Who would have figured? So yeah, the uh, okay, so the antique dealer drops him off, and actually <laughs> drops him off, and actually leaves the. And of course, the rabbi has something for him. Which, of course, is a uh, part of the scepter. Or so we think. Anyway, he stabs him with one of the knives. Uh, that he actually hit it from the tomb. It's like, I found this will kill you, you bastard. Yeah, For my brother, you bastard. Spawn of Satan. What's that for those? <laughs> you really think this is going to kill me? You're wrong. You should put a little heart into it. And he rips his heart out. So, oh yeah, I should also mention like uh, Mr. Lockley. Uh, Lockley actually had a uh, hooker with him who was taking a shower at the time. So she walks in. Oh, your services are no longer required. Uh, uh, no longer required. <laughs> For a while back down, uh, back down on street level, uh, we have Frank. Uh, we have Frank and Cal actually ta arresting the, the drug dealing pimp and of course his bodyguard. In fact, he, in fact, Frank actually provokes the bodyguard to punch him. It's like, go ahead, hit me, tough guy. Come on, hit me. Come on, you sack of shit, hit me. Come on, don't you fucking look at him. Hit me, you dumb fuck. A, and what's the bodyguard do? Hmm. You call that a hit? Oh! <laughs> Wait, he flies over the fucking car onto the onto the street. It's like, that's a hit. <laughs> Oh, you know, I just realized how awesome would, uh, I mean, how better, how much better would Red, uh, would Red Dawn have been with, uh, what's the Schwarzenegger film? Uh, yeah, Red, Red Heat, yeah. How awesome do you think Red Heat would have been uh, but if they got rid of Jim Belushi and, you, and put Chuck Norris in there but instead, and we have like two, yeah, we have a badass Chuck Norris and a, hot, and a Russian badass Arnold Schwarzenegger together. Think about that. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, think about that. That would have been epic badassery. But hey, I got your dream, Kenny. Okay. So anyway, the, 
So anyway, wacky, so anyway, the welcome wacky comes by and actually takes him away, and then the hooker that was with uh, Porthasinos actually gets tossed out the window, and it lands on their car. It's like, okay, let's go up there. <laughs> Franco's in there. Freeze. So basically, Parthenos actually just threatens him with like, oh, like God knows what the fuck he's saying. <laughs> but here's a bit of a, but this is kind of a funny line when you think about it, because it's a horror film and an action film mixed together. And to be fair, this line is kind of funny when you think about it. It's like, buddy, you're all hard. Oh, speaking of hard, and keep this in mind, Parthenos is in the shadows, so Frank doesn't can't even get a good look at his face. So, all right, so what does he do? He throws the heart right by him. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> he runs towards him, he shoots him a couple of times. Then he gets up, he throws him around the room a little bit, though, and then throws him out the fucking door, where Calvin just happens to be right by the door, and then he hits him. I'm like, wow! What the fuck, Frank? Jesus! What the hell is he? Shit, he's gone! What the fuck? Hey, who's that? Oh, that's a rabbi. Oh, that's our, oh, that's our new victim. Okay. Oh, shit! His heart is gone! Where the hell is it? Which you do? It's literally right behind you. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Okay, I know I'm exaggerating on that part, but uh, that's what Calvin actually said, which is pretty fucking hilarious. So they actually write the report out. Of course, the sheet doesn't actually believe them, but of course, Frank tells him everything what happened to the best of his knowledge. And I should mention this is actually during the Chicago Bulls playoffs in season two. So, uh, yeah, they're actually, so yeah, Calvin is really hitting, is actually really rooting for the Bulls on this one. And to be fair, Michael Jordan is on the team. So, uh, yeah, go Bulls. So, so yeah. Anyway, so, uh, Frank actually, anyway, the following day, uh, Frank actually gives, uh, gives, Frank, and gives Calvin some good news. He got tickets to the playoff season, but there's another problem. Uh, the chief actually booked a flight between, for for both of them to go straight to Jerusalem because the rabbi was a very highly important rabbi. So, what does he do? So what they so what they do? Yeah, they had to be. Their plane leaves in about four hours, and the playoff tickets are for the night. Fuck. So they make it to Jerusalem, and they have a. Crazy taxi driver moment, you know, from like tr from the game Crazy Taxi. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. That it's, I mean, I that is literally what the what ta Crazy Taxi is. Okay, if you ever play the game Crazy Taxi, yeah, it's Crazy Taxi. And there's a and there's a translation joke where the guy goes, "Oh, what's your shitty driver?" Oh, that's what you are. You're a shitty driver. So, oh yes, yeah, I shitty driver. I shitty driver. There's so many jokes I want to make there, but I'm not going to go any further. No, it, it speaks for itself. So they get still into the room and head straight to the police station. And of course, uh, the police detective, the police chief in Jerusalem is a bit of a hard ass. Uh, so they calmly, they calmly go through the entire case word for word. And eventually they're get, they get done. They go back home or they go back to their room. The next day they decide to go. <laughs> They decided to go to the prof uh, uh, they decided to go to the antiques dealer because uh, Frank actually found the antiques ca dealer card in the, with uh, on the victim. And what's the dealer's name? His name is Mr. Krieger. Okay, so they go to Mr. Krieger's office. They tell they try to the whole do the whole good cop bad cop thing, but uh, it turns out they were both doing bad cops, so they kind of screwed up a little bit though. And the guy freaks out. It's like, what the fuck, man? I thought you were gonna do bad cop. What? I thought you were gonna do bad cop. I thought you were going to do good cop. So, no, I thought you were going to do that. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, they do this whole good cop, bad cop routine, and they just, uh, it kind of failed at this point. So they decided to, so they decided to go through the next thing, which is Professor Lockler's office. Uh, however, before however, before they went to Jerusalem, they actually went to Professor Lockler's uh, office over in Chicago, and guess what they bump into? Just wait. They bump into a woman, his secretary, Miss Leslie Hawkins, played by, and I wish I was joking about this, uh, Sherry James Wilson, the actress who plays Alex Cahill on Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's the same actress. Yeah, seriously. 
before she was Alex Cahill, she was in this movie. What are the odds of that? No, seriously, what what were the odds of that? I mean, seriously, it'd be even more crazy if the actor, I mean, if the actor who was playing Calvin would have been, uh, would have actually been James, the actor who plays James Chavette. Uh, although he actually died recently, although he actually died recently, I'm not going to make any jokes about that, so, yeah, rest in peace, buddy boy. So, bro, rest in peace, okay? So, anyway, they actually, so, anyway, you know, back in Chicago, she tells him about the scepter and about uh, part of the, uh, Parthenus. Now, fuck, I can't say the guy's name right. So, man, I'm trying here. I mean, the guy's name is hard to say. Parthenos. Now, okay. So she tells about the, the about the uh, about the about the demon Parthenos and about what he, what he had done back in the Middle East, uh, back during the Crusades period. And they show, and he show, she shows her the thing about with the sept, a photo of the scepter. Now, back in Jerusalem. They meet up again, and this time around, she decides to take him to Professor Lachlan uh, at the dig site. And wouldn't you happen to know the dig site is the... <laughs> it's actually the ritual site where the movie began. Only oh, thousands of years old. What the hell? So Professor Lachlan actually meets up with Frank and Calvin. And, like, and he's a bit eccentric, but then again, he knows that he actually fought Frank earlier in Chicago, and he tries to heavily dismiss it. It's like, it's like oh. Whatever. So, so yeah, he tries to be more of an eccentric professor, give or take. But we know for a fact it's a demon. So, and we know he knows. So, all right, but the thing is, Frank doesn't know neither does Calvin. Hmm. So, well, can you tell us about this? Well, this is supposed to be the top of the staff of Parthenos' scepter, but unfortunately, it's a fake. What? No, it's a fake. I'm not kidding. Here, watch. See, it's a fucking fake. If it was real, it wouldn't have broke so easily. You know that was key evidence for homicide. Send me the bill. All right, I'll, I'll pay for it later. All right. Now, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, the princess, I'll see you later. Yeah, he calls uh, Leslie Princess. Why? You'll find out later. <laughs> so, eventually, they, so they, they still go... So, yeah. Calvin... So, yeah, there's also, like, a... There's also, like, a bit of a side joke with this kid character. Uh, hold on. Bezzy. Yeah, this is kid character who's also like a con artist called Bezzy, who actually steals Calvin's wallet, only to have Frank actually steal it and take it back from him. <laughs> so yeah, and they eventually meet him again later on in the movie. So it's kind of like one of those semi Kenny moments, but uh, in this movie it's kind of funny. In this movie, it's a little funny because it's like a running joke. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, Calvin actually has to call the police chief in Chicago, which is a female. Which is a female officer, and of course, he tries to charm her a little bit, though, over the phone. It's like, oh, that's uh, but even the hotel clerk is looking at him like, you fucking player, unbelievable. And what's Frank do? He goes up to his room and he fights masked henchmen, yeah, just fights a couple of masked henchmen, yeah. So, yeah, he beats the living crap out of them, so yeah, he beats the living shit out of them, though, and knocks them both out. But after Calvin's done with the call, he actually tries to go upstairs, where Krieger actually knocks him out and takes the and takes the head of the scepter. Oh, wait. After the fight, like Calvin's like, oh, god damn it. Huh. Huh. Nice work. Thanks. What happened to you? Oh, Krieger knocked my ass out to the head of the scepter. God damn it. So, yeah, should we go after him? Yeah, let's go after him. But, oh, wait, do you need anything? To, nah, let's just get this. Nah, no, nah, let's get this while it's still hot. Let's go. All right. Uh, so they uh, so they try to go after Krieger. Only when they get to Krieger's office, uh, yeah, Parthenius beat them there. Yeah, Parthenius is actually there waiting for Krieger, and of course he threatens him, and he eventually kills him because apparently that the scepter head was actually fake the whole time. He kills him. Yeah, because he's looking for all pieces of the scepter. Go figure. They eventually, of course, Frank and Calvin get there, and they're like, "Well, he's dead." Now what? Well, what's your trying to? There's another holy place we should go to. We should go check out. All right. So thanks to Bezzy, they actually find out where this other holy place is, and they actually get there in time. Uh, uh, only to talk to a blind priest who actually knows about the final piece of the scepter is, but he tells them that they're, that they're all damned, that they're all going to die if they 
blah, 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 blah. He doesn't actually really help them, so they actually wind up leaving, and he actually goes to get the scepter, last piece of the scepter, all in that for Thathos right there to kill him and take the last piece of the scepter. Yeah. And here's a bit of a fun fact. Uh, throughout the entire movie, Parthenus has actually been going around the world killing off uh, p- killing off holy men. Yeah. Priests, rabbi, ministers, all because they had pieces of his scepter. So yeah, all gruesome murders. So yeah, Fra- uh, Frank and Calvin hit up the commotion, go and find the, de- the b- wine priest. He's dead. So you know what they do? They decided to go to the police. Frank decides, okay, we need some more information. So we go to the pl- So they go straight to the police station and sneak in and gently knock out one of the guards, not killing him, just knocking him out real quick, Chuck Doris style, which means he's probably going to have a headache in the morning. And they're going, Did somebody shot me in the back of the fucking head? Ugh. But anyway, they actually check out the police report that on the ca- on the police chief's desk, the Jerusalem police chief, by the way, and he calls up Leslie, who's actually at the office of Do- of Doctor Lachlan, and he asks, "Listen, has Doctor Lachlan been on any vaca- been on any tours lately?" Uh, yeah, like archaeology, t- yeah, archaeology tours. Yes, he has been. So, oh, can you give us the name and dates real quick? And he's looking over, and as Leslie's given the dates, uh, uh, Frank says the dates right to Calvin, and Calvin's looking at the. Uh, at the listing of all the people who have actually been killed, all these holy men who have been killed, and ironically, they're in the exact same place and the same times that Lachlan happened to be there. So they put the connection together that Lachlan is the killer. That they think he might be part of He might be this demon creature or something. Uh, so they hang up and actually go straight to Lachlan's place. After Leslie hangs up, Parthenos uh, is right there going, don't worry, princess. You'll be my fi- you'll be my sacrifice. So yeah, he turns to yeah, he shows his demon eyes and he uh, knocks her out and like brings her to the temple. But meanwhile, Calvin and Frank go straight to Lachlan's house and actually make a few discoveries. Like yeah, he's really into all this, and they think yeah, you know what? I don't care if this guy's a human or a demon, but this is he's definitely our killer. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Hey, is that Leslie? Yeah, this guy. Who's this guy right here? I don't know, he's royalty. Looks like she's royalty, too. Yeah. No, I gotta call her back real quick. They call the office. Unfortunately, the the other secretary picks up, and it's like, oh, where'd Leslie go? Oh, she stepped out a few minutes ago. But, okay, wait a minute. There's something we gotta. I gotta ask. There's a photo I'm looking at here with her and with a nobleman of some kind. Oh, that's her father. The du- uh, well, that's the father, the Duke of... Uh, what? Oh, that's her father. He's a Duke. Wait, her father's a Duke? That means she's royalty? Yes. Wait a minute, doesn't he, wait a minute, doesn't Parthenos' sacrifice need royal blood? Shit! So they race all the way down to the temple. <laughs> In record time. And I should also mention, too, there's actually been, like, a holy man following them. Just, like, coming in the shadows, like... Okay. You gotta help them or something? Are you a bad guy? Are you with them? Are you with Hart? Are you? The... Who are you? So Parthenos actually starts his ritual again, and this time he has some hordes with him again. <laughs> and of course, uh, but to be fair, they actually Frank and uh, Frank and Calvin get there before he actually can do uh, to perform the sacrificial ritual, and they wake Leslie up. Unfortunately, they have to go through several henchmen, uh, which are skeletons. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's revealed that there are actually skeletons underneath, so I don't know how that was even possible, or how they worked that in, but maybe they were, hey, maybe they were ske- uh, skeletons from, uh, from from Skyrim or something, or probably from Oblivion. I'm just guessing here. I mean, they're definitely not skeletons from Dark Souls, those things are fucking impossible to kill. You ever, you ever play that game? I haven't. I sure as hell don't want to play it. No. 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 no! Let's get back to the movie. Okay. So eventually, uh, Frank, and, uh, Frank and Calvin try to fight off Parthenos, but yeah, he's just too damn strong. All right. So basically, Parthenos actually throws Calvin around, and Frank 
being played by Chuck Norris, does his whole Chuck Norris spiel. And it does kind of work, but only puts him down for a second and he gets right back up. Kind of like kind of like how Kane and The Undertaker actually do, uh, do this shit in uh, WWE all the time. Hmm. Kind of a weird reference there. And what's even more of a weird reference is that Chuck Norris actually vo- volunteered to actually keep an eye, actually keep make sure Undertaker was actually screwed over in a match one time. Yeah. I'm not joking. There's actually a WWE, there's actually an Undertaker match where Chuck Norris was the bodyguard to make sure nobody interferes with the match. Uh, because Chuck, because it was the Undertaker suggesting they to bring in Chuck Norris. So that's, um, I gotta, re- you know, I, I gotta review something that's WWE property next time around. No, I'll do it next month. Fuck it. Sorry, I'm just, I just can't get that match out of my head now. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so they continue fighting, and, well, he's just too damn strong. They eventually toss the scepter away from him, though, and they still try to fight him, but again, he's just too strong. And, of course, Frank and Calvin ask Leslie, is there any way to kill this guy? Uh, and Leslie tries to re- recite the poem of uh, how, to ki- how to stop him, and she realizes, so, that oh that uh, that which governs his power is also his uh, is also his doom. So the wait, it's the scepter. You just on him. What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The scepter is his weakness. He draws his power from it, but it's also his weakness. How? Uh, so yeah, he tried. So Parthenos tries to get to the freaking uh, scepter, but uh. He, but Calvin actually stops him until he actually gets kicked off, and then uh, Frank grabs the scepter and throws it into his chest, throws it into Pothasio's chest, and of course he goes completely nuts. He's like, ah! <laughs> basically, he wells, wells, and he's dying. He he, he reverts to back to his demon form, and he pretty much explodes. While that's going on, Calvin and Frank actually wound up getting Leslie, and they get the fuck out of there. So yeah, the demon's finally destroyed, and the uh, the scepter's now in pieces. And guess what happens? That holy man that's been following them throughout the whole film, he shows up and he goes, Now it is my turn to be the keeper of the scepter's pieces, and make sure they will never fall into the wrong hands again. Like my grandfather helped the, the king so long ago, you're the heir to the priest from the beginning of the movie. Why the fuck didn't you help these guys earlier? And, you know, never mind. So anyway, at the airport, Leslie actually bids Frank goodbye. Uh, bids Frank and Calvin a goodbye. And of course, they do almost wind up kissing. But Calvin interrupts them because he's watching the bull, the bull, the final game in the bull season. And uh, yeah, they won the championship. Awesome. All right, Desi's with uh, Desi's with them watching the game too, so he's like excited too. And of course, they uh, they just they greet goodbye to everybody. But Bessie actually took Calvin's wallet again. Uh, and takes Calvin's wallet again, and he's going through the wallet, and he's like, and the last thing we see is uh, Frank going, "Hey, Calvin, did you make sure you got everything this time?" Yes. <laughs> the last thing which we see is Bessie going. And the movie just ends right there for the spot. It just freeze frames on Bessie like. It's like it's a free stream saying like at this this was the last time anybody saw Bessie. He he was fa- uh, saw Bessie alive. A few months later, he was discovered with his head up his ass uh, after uh, and a note saying, "Stop! Uh, this is for stealing my wallet, you little bastard." <laughs> and that was Hellbound. <laughs> oh, so do I get to recommend watching this movie for Halloween for the Halloween season? Eh, no, no, not exactly. I mean, not particularly. I mean, the only reason why I kind of reviewed this movie is because of the fact that one, it's actually a because one, it actually is called Hellbound, and I just did. And of course, the last film I just did was Hellbound Two, was actually Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser Two. So, pretty obvious I had to talk about this film sooner or later. And plus, I needed to do a Chuck Norris film to balance out my martial arts film quarry. For the time being, but 
in all the fairness, this movie uh, this film isn't really that bad particularly. It's actually one of the better film it's actually one of the good films that's actually on this collection. But if you want to see a really good Chuck Norris film, definitely watch the Hitman. That's a good, that's a great one. Force Vengeance, yeah, I'd skip that one. Uh, for obvious reasons. I'm not gonna probably say what it is until like maybe I get a chance to review it. Ever. <laughs> but as for Hellbound, it's an okay movie, decently passable, and it came out around the time when Chuck, when Walker Texas Ranger was coming out. So, yeah, it kind of ties into Walker a little bit, though. But yeah, so it's a pretty decent movie. So, if it's on, give it a watch. If you're a Chuck Norris fan, you may actually like it. Hmm. You know, speaking of which. I think it also if there's something I should probably review, that there's another film character I should probably review. A character I've liked since I was a kid, but I haven't watched his movies in years, in over 20 years. Wait a minute. I think I know what I can review. Oh, yeah. I think there's a certain animated dog I need to review. Wow. I'm going to go over 300 episodes and I'm finally going to review one of his movies. Hey, at least I'm not doing any of the shitty live action films. Or that piece of crap that's on Max. You know what the hell I'm talking about. So, tune in next time and we'll take a look at a Scooby-Doo movie. That takes place on the, that's actually perfect for Halloween. I think I know which one. I don't know which one to review. Well, let's just say that it's, in, that it's going to be Terror Time. Once again, this is Jr. Swank signing out.